Welcome back to General Chemistry 2 to the next section in Chapter 18. It should be a pretty short section. And last time we talked about the second law of thermodynamics and the fact that to get a spontaneous reaction, one that occurs at specific conditions, you have to have an overall positive increase in the randomness or entropy of the, of the universe. And today we're going to take a look at how to calculate delta S, the change in entropy of specific reactions. So we're building on all this to eventually predict spontaneity, but for now we're still focusing on entropy. So the third law of thermodynamics helps us actually calculate delta S, actually calculate the numerical values of entropy for reactions. So let's go ahead and get that definition down. I have some other things over here that we're going to use. I'll pull those down later. So third law of thermo. This definition helps us define entropy in terms of real life conditions. So entropy of pure, perfectly ordered crystalline solid So think about the entropy right now. Entropy of pure, perfectly ordered crystalline solid, very, very low entropy, but also at absolute zero. So we're talking now the point at which theoretically you have a perfectly ordered crystalline solid and there's the temperature at which there's no more uh, kinetic motion. So this is a really, really low, low entropy situation. So it's impossible to achieve, but it's the standard that we use. Basically, this means there, there's only one microstate. So if we think about this, remember we used this equation, entropy of the system or process or whatever we're looking at is equivalent to Boltzmann's constant. This is not equilibrium or kinetics. We just have so many letters. So we use K for Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W. Now if W equals one microstate, that's when we're at this absolute zero level. There's no, there's no there are not multiple equivalent microstates, rearrangements for these atoms to be. So this is the theoretical spot where there's one microstate. So entropy equals Boltzmann constant times natural log of one, that is zero. So entropy equals K times zero, so it's zero. That's really the third law of thermodynamics. So experimental values are rel basically relative to this. That's how we get from the third law of thermodynamics to actually calculating out these experimental values. So we call these standard molar entropy values. S standard little f down here. If we remember back to thermodynamics, we had enthalpy, delta H values, standard as well. So we could calculate the delta H of a reaction by looking at the values in a table. And we're going to do the same thing for delta S. So standard, the little not, that means 298 Kelvin, basically room temperature-ish, and one atmosphere of pressure. That is standard everyday lab conditions. So this is a far, far and away from pure absolute zero. Remember, this is really the zero entropy. So we're going to have all of these values are going to be positive. If we look up here, this is the table I pulled. This is the standard entropies of some common compounds. 
and look at the delta s values. They are all going to be positive values. All of this has some standard level of randomness, disorder, and it's going to vary depending on the compound. They all have their standard values. So they're all going to be less or greater than zero because zero is the state at which you have perfect order and no kinetic motion. So we are going to use this reaction, or sorry, this equation here. If I can get this to work, copy, don't make a fool out of me. Not in front of my students, not in front of the internet. It's making a fool out of me. That's all right. I'll just drag it down like a chump. Here we go. So how do we find actual delta S of a reaction? Well, we just need two things. We need the standard enthalpy values of the products, the sum of all of them times their molar coefficients, minus the sum of all the delta S values of the reactants that we all that we can look up in a table. So before this makes a fool out of me, I'm going to drag it down here as well. Put that over there. So let's do a problem here. This is example 18.3. And 18.3 asks us to first predict the sign of delta S of the reaction or system again. And two, calculate the actual value. Calculate the standard entropy change. So if you see standard entropy change, you're thinking this equation up here using the values. So number one, let's, well, let's look at the reaction. We've seen this reaction many times. It's hydrogen gas combining with oxygen gas to produce H2O gas. So number one, what's the sign of the entropy value? As in overall going from this to this, are we getting more randomness, more entropy or less entropy? Well, for this, remember we need to look at states, but really in this case, the moles. We've got three moles of gas combining to two moles of gas. So we have less entropy. We're, overall, we, are, we should predict a negative delta S value. Overall, we lost randomness. We should have a negative value overall here. So let's actually calculate out the delta S of the reaction now. Again, or system. Same thing, we're looking at the reaction, the delta S of the system. We're not predicting spontaneity or anything right now, we're just talking about entropy. So, according to our equation, we need the delta S formation values of all the reactants times their molar coefficients. So we only have one, or sorry, product. Products first, minus the reactants. So all the products minus the total of all the reactants. So all the stuff on the right minus all the stuff on the left. So we have two moles, two moles over H2O. And now we need to look up the standard delta S value. This would always be given to you in a table. For not liquid, careful, we're in the gas phase. Notice the entropy, standard entropy of formation of the standard entropy of a H2 a gas molecule is much higher than a liquid molecule. So numerically, we should expect that to be higher, gas phase versus liquid phase. So two times 188.8, and notice the units here. These are in energy, joules, divided by moles times Kelvin. So just remember that, those are the real joules per mole on Kelvin. So that's our first value. This is our sum of all the Molar coefficients times all of our reactants, or products rather, sorry. Put that into big brackets. 
And the actual number there, well, we'll write these out in a second. So what's our big sum for the right-hand side? Two times the hydrogen value and one times the oxygen value. So two times, let's see here, 130.7 for hydrogen. Plus just a one, I don't have to put it there, but I will, times the amount for oxygen. And that looks like it is 205.2 joules per mole times Kelvin. And in reality, there's this means two moles. This is two moles. This is one mole. So the moles actually are going to cancel here. Right? These are actually going away. So that's important. And now we actually add these up. So let's actually get our numerical values here. This is going to come out to 377.6 joules per Kelvin. This represents the enthalpy value for two moles of H2O that was formed during the reaction. So the overall change is the, the products, the final minus the initial. The initial entropy was this, all this stuff added together on the right, and that was 466. Okay, this represents the 2H2 plus O2. So we predicted up here that overall we should have less entropy than we started. And check it out, we did. We, we ended up at 377.6 over here, and we started with this much entropy. So overall, we have less than we started, so the final minus the initial should be a negative value, and that's what we're going to get. So our delta S for reaction is negative 89.0 joules per Kelvin. So the third law really is all about just giving us a starting point, a theoretical starting point, and from there, relative to the perfect case of zero entropy, these are all the real life cases. You know, 298 Kelvin and different types of compounds. So these are the actual enthalpy value, or sorry, the entropy values of these compounds. So if we started with a larger number over here and got a smaller number, the final minus initial or the products minus the reactants should get a, give us a negative delta S value. That is really all this section is about. Um, we will keep using this concept of entropy, but we are going to move on to really combining entropy of the system. Remember, we've been studying so far delta S of the system, in this case, the reaction. So remember, spontaneous reactions To get something to be spontaneous, the delta S of the universe has to be positive. And the universe is the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings. So we're going to be talking more about that in the next coming sections. And I'll see you guys then.